This week was a pretty big milestone for the project. I was trying to figure out a way of getting an A-Life type system into the game. That is where you have the characters constantly simulated throughout the world, no matter where they are. So even if you can't see them, they're still living their lives. So the way I've implemented it in this project, there are two modes. There's the on-map and then there's the off-map. On-map refers to anything that the player can see. So if it's in their same area, and off map is when they're in an area that the player currently isn't. In the demo that I'm setting up, there's three areas. There's the airlock, there's the slums, and then there's the outlands. So the current setup for the AI is quite simple. They will move from one area to the other and they'll pick a random path to go there. If the player is in the same area as them, it will spawn a visual representation of them. So a character like you'd normally see, and you can interact with them in different ways. You could shoot them, you could talk to them, you could trade with them. Like these are the kind of behaviors that I want to have in the game. Uh, currently right now, shooting and talking is the only things you have. So the, the end goal for this system is there's going to be several factions in the world. They will send out different characters in different places and they will have their own goals as a faction. And then the individuals will have their own goals as well. So some of the characters may uh, need to eat some food, find some shelter, etc. They will they will do what they need to do to fulfill those needs throughout the world. I'll show you this quick video of a guard moving from one world to another, and then you follow through, and then they're there as well. It, the idea here is when I say that your actions have consequence in this game, if you take out a character, that character's entire story can't progress. Like they, they no longer have a, an impact on the world. So if they were going to sell something to someone else in another town, that person isn't going to get that thing anymore. And then that may cause quests and missions to spawn out of that because that resource never got to that person. So they're now requesting it from other people. So there's, there's a lot of depth that can come from a simple system like that. So the next major thing is I've actually figured out the name for the game called Tales from the Dome. It's gonna be set 50 years after an ecological breakdown on earth. People are mostly living in these giant dome contraptions around the world and trade is happening between these things. There's also uh, giant machinery out in the landscape, which is helping to terraform the earth completely ambivalent. They don't really care about what the people are doing. Um, they're just getting on with their job. There are different groups and factions within this world. There are people that live exclusively outside the domes in this semi-toxic world, and you need to figure out different ways of interacting with them. So the domes themselves are actually falling apart to some degree. They weren't designed to last this long. You as a player from that dome, you're tasked with going out to find different resources in the world. You may, you may choose to follow that, or you may decide to go your own way. It's gonna be completely free form what you do once you get outside of the dome. You could decide to go become one of the other faction members and decide to do something else. You could decide completely to ignore the dome and let it rot. That's completely down to you as a player. I wanted there to be a story arc that the player can play through. I want the factions to have their own stories as well. And I also wanted there to be more dynamic encounters with the NPCs in the world because all of them are trying to achieve their own goals. You as a player are just one of many characters in this world. You are not the main character, you are a character. And the impact that you have on the world could vary from minor to major depending on what you do. So things are coming together quickly. I'm looking forward to getting some concept art for the game. I've just been talking to a few people the last couple of weeks. Hopefully I can get something in place before the end of, uh, end of the year, but I, that's unlikely, but we'll, we'll see. I've also had some VO work done and that is going to really help sell the character states because um, when guards are going in and out of different behaviors, you want to know what they're doing. So, you know, if they're looking for medical supplies, they're going to shout it out. If they've been shot, they'll start making noises as well. I've got some sound effects as well. That's going to really help sell some of the world. I'm aiming for the end of this month, which would be the 19th of December, to have something that's like a first playable. It's just going to be a very simple demo that shows some of the mechanics working together. It's by no means finished. But the idea here is that I can go and point to it and say, look, this is what the world could be, let's just keep growing it. This will not be a public launch, um, this will be internal testers only. The game is currently going up to Steam every single day right now. Um, every night it uploads a build and that build I then download and test to see if there's any issues. It's mostly playable right now. One of the biggest things I have right now is adding more content because there's not too much to do right now. 
apart from one quest which is given to you by one guard in a room. Once you've completed that quest, the game is effectively over. I need to add a lot more quests into the game. Um, I would like there to be at least 15 minutes of gameplay for this first playable. So my goal is by the end of this month, we will have most of that done. And then I will hopefully be able to start showing more videos about what the game is and where it's going. There's a couple of other bits that I worked on, um, mostly minor additions to the gameplay loop, um, making sure the gunplay felt a bit better. I changed some of the sights, changed some of the aiming, changed some of the sounds. So another thing I've set up is the website for Hidden State Games. Um, it's just hiddenstate.games right now. It's gonna be a holding website until I've got more content to really put on it. I wanna start doing devlogs in written form as well as these videos. If you wanna follow along with the development of the project, the Discord channel is linked below. It's probably one of the best places to see the live development of the project. I'm only working on this Mondays and Tuesdays, so if you jump into the channel on a Monday or Tuesday, chances are I'm gonna be there, and if you have any questions, you can just ask me directly. I try and post a bit more information than I'm posting publicly about the project in there. The idea is just, it's, it's where I go and put like, this is the thing I've literally just finished coding and it goes in here and uh, here's a picture of the thing working, or here's a video. In the future, when I start doing play tests, I will be doing them in my Discord as well, so people can play the game and I can watch the live streams that they're doing and also record any feedback. Also, if you're curious about what the actual game feels like, you can see someone else playing it or maybe be one of the testers yourself. There's a long journey ahead. It's not gonna be easy, that's for sure. I'm still aiming for like 18 months total delivery for this, but there's a lot of external pieces that need to be nailed before this can really become a reality. One of the biggest ones is gonna be funding in the new year. Um, alongside getting the right members of the team involved. So because of the kind of game it is, I can grow or shrink the scale of what the game could be, or I could just incrementally add to it over time. I'm not concerned that it won't be delivered, it'll just be the scope of which I'm trying to aim for in the first pass. I'm trying to be as transparent as possible in the entire process, like start to finish of making a game, along with the other bits of running a studio as well. So these devlogs will be once a week, the Discord is also there for if you want to have like immediate feedback of what I'm working on. But um, yeah, if you want to just follow along, just subscribe or join the Discord. That's the two options you got right now. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next one.